Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Menashe. Today's another AMA episode, that is, Ask Me Anything. I love to answer your questions, and if you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in, and I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. Today's question comes from Carl in Austin. He says, I'm looking at a mobile home park with quite a bit of vacancy, and I'm wondering if it's possible to put RVs on those spaces. What are some of the considerations I should be aware of? Well, Carl, this is a great question. First of all, I'd like to address why I might be even qualified to answer the question. I happen to be a partner in an RV park that is currently about 50% RVs and 50% mobile homes. In order to answer your question, there's two things you need to consider. Number one, is what you're proposing allowed in the zoning for the property? And number two, what upgrades might be required to physically accomplish what you're proposing? In order to answer the first part, you need to look into the actual zoning code for the specific property. The zoning code will list the properties having a certain primary use, and then possibly a number of permitted secondary uses. When we built our mobile home and RV park, we had the zoning approval for both uses. Turns out that the density for RVs and mobile homes are different. We needed the same land for two RV spaces as would be used for every mobile home. Now, many mobile home parks across Texas are not currently zoned as mobile home parks or the related zoning category. Instead, they have zoning that allows for other uses. For example, in San Antonio, only 31% of the city's 89 active mobile home parks are protected under the city's manufactured housing district zoning, the city's zoning classification specifically for mobile home parks. Close to 25% of the mobile home parks are zoned as commercial, and another 25% are zoned as single-family or multifamily residential, but mobile home parks are an approved secondary use. San Antonio's Manufactured Housing District zoning also allows for single-family residential uses, and it doesn't provide strong protection as some other cities having mobile home zoning categories. So to understand the concept of primary versus secondary use, you might have a rural property, for example, that is zoned as agricultural but it might allow for a veterinary clinic as an approved secondary use. doesn't mean you can build a medical clinic on the property, but only a veterinary clinic. See, approved secondary uses are listed in the details as part of the subpart of the zoning code. RVs may or may not be permitted. The difference being the transient nature of RVs versus mobile homes, which are frankly not that mobile. The second part is whether it's practical with the existing infrastructure. An RV is designed to be connected and disconnected in seconds. A mobile home is a semi-permanent installation. The power supply for a typical mobile home is a 200 amp electrical panel, and the mobile home is hardwired in the 200 amp service by an electrician. An RV, on the other hand, would require either a 30 amp or 50 amp twist lock connection, and there might be modifications to your electrical infrastructure required to add the RV connections and the circuit breakers at each power source at each pad. The same is true for water and sewer. Mobile homes tend to be plumbed with a semi-permanent connection, whereas the RV simply requires a garden hose and a check valve. You get the idea, these connections usually also require a pedestal to be mounted, whereas a mobile home would be a completely different infrastructure. The final most important consideration is whether the mix of residents is consistent with the use. Unless you can truly segregate the RV section from the mobile home section, I think you'll find that most people traveling by RV will be uncomfortable backing up their pop-up tent trailer between two mobile homes with permanent residents on either side. These flows are just not complementary to each other. And permanent residents also don't tend to be neat and tidy as a transient RV might be. The permanent residents might be uncomfortable with new neighbors every night. Having transient people coming through can affect their feeling of safety if they're small children playing in the yard. Most locations will be required to charge hotel tax for stays under 30 days. That means you'll need to change the systems within the park's operations in order to manage bookings and short-term stays. A mobile home park typically doesn't market to those types of transient stays. In order to attract RV traffic to the park, you're going to need to market the park accordingly. You'll need a new website that's recognizable to the search engines as an RV park and not a mobile home park. RVs don't automatically seek out a mobile home park as a place to stay for the night or even a week. The systems for running an RV park business are completely different. That means investing in hotel management software. There's many good systems out there like CloudBeds and Guest Tracker, to name a couple that we've used in-house. 
the systems required to manage a mobile home park, they're just completely different. The analogy is like comparing the property management system for a rental apartment building where you collect monthly rent from the same tenants every month versus hotel management that has daily turnover. And they're just vastly different systems. The idea of hosting RVs on the whole is not a bad idea, but there's a number of feasibility questions to be answered before you embark down that path. I want to thank you, Carl, for a terrific question. And for the listeners at home, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.